Hello everyone and welcome to the Battery Test Channel. On the bench today we have two 12.0 batteries, a supercharger on the left and a rapid charger. And if you can't tell, we're about to charge these and see how they do. I want to know what the difference is between the two chargers with these specific batteries. Keep in mind that the supercharger is specifically made for these half high output batteries. So I'm expecting it to do about twice as well. Um, and considering the cost, uh, I, think it, I think that expectation is justified. I have noticed that with different batteries, it does perform very differently. And in fact, with some of the smaller batteries, the supercharger tends to, well, quite literally cook them. And we're going to run over the math and uh, look at some of those later. But for today, we're going to look at the big boy, the 12.0. First things first, I wanna talk about, um, let's see. I wanna talk about how some of these batteries behave. And as I turn these around, I'm going to hit the button on both of these. Let's see. There we go, it's blinking red, blinking red. You would expect that both of these are at the same voltage, but what we're going to find out is something different. So check this out. When I probe the voltage of the first battery, eventually, as I practice my chopstick grip, 17.3 volts. So for a five cell, for a five cell count in series, we have 17.3. However, this one that blinks the exact same way, indicating that's completely dead, we have 16.13, if I can hold this steady. 16.13, and I think this was 17.3. That's a massive difference, and they're both blinking the same way. And when these blink red, what that means is that if you, if you hook it up to a device, they will refuse to function. In other words, they are saying that they are completely depleted. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to bring this battery up to uh, the same voltage as that one. Better yet, I've got another battery right over here. This one behaves the same as the first battery up top, and I have this discharged as well to 16.335. So what I'm gonna do is get rid of the 17 volt battery, and I'm going to charge the battery up here, which is at 16.1, up to 16.35. So I'm going to charge this up to 16.35, get rid of this battery, and we're going to charge both of these on the chargers and see how they perform. I want an apples to apples comparison, not just a, hey, this is discharged, because as you just saw, there's a one volt difference, which is not massively significant because at the lower end, they, the voltage does cha change or fluctuate pretty rapidly. However, I want a I want an accurate representation of the two chargers. So let's set this up. Um, I will top off, well, charge the lower battery to 16.35. I'll let it stabilize for some time. We'll plug it in and let's get a time lapse started. Welcome back. And actually, I lied. I want to show you something. So this is interesting. Battery one here that I've charged up now has a solid, not blinking one light. And if I probe the voltage, you'll notice that it is at 16.34. And of course, this is the first battery that was at 16.35. Notice it's blinking. So that tells us that there is a difference in firmware between these two batteries. And they're blinking differently, even though the batteries are at the same voltage. These two batteries are at the same state of charge because they're at the same voltage. And I don't care what the blinking lights say, they are now equivalent. So right here, this tells us that the blinking lights alone are only so accurate. And if you go by that, you would probably think that this has a 25% charge and this is completely depleted, but that is not the case. So something important to point out, you have to check the voltage, you can't simply go by the lights. So now let's go ahead and get it set up and I'm going to add a power meter so we know how much, uh, how much energy each battery took because that's going to tell us not only the speed and how quickly the energy was taken up by the battery, but also what is the status of the battery? Because if this one only absorbs 200 watt hours, this one absorbs 220, you know that not only that there's a difference in the, in the charger, of course, but also that there might be a difference in the battery, battery aging, and uh, there might be other factors. So let's get this set up for real this time and I'll see you in a minute.
charging is done. On the left, we have the supercharger that used up 245 watt hours. And on the right, we have the rapid charger that used up 238. And it took about an hour and 52. I'm gonna have to remember to freeze that time because that timer on the right seems to keep going. And go ahead and disconnect these. All right. Well, that was a mistake. So the difference between these two, let's, let's talk about minimum, maximum watts. Let's cycle through. We have 337 and 146. So the supercharger used up a maximum of 338 watts. And then we have the rapid charger that used 146. Already we know that having used a similar amount of power, let's see, what was that? About 240 and change, about 240, about 240 watt hours. This took 54 minutes and that took one hour and 54 minutes. So more than twice as long. So we know that the average wattage is uh, about double. So with a 12 amp hour battery, uh, Milwaukee advertises a sub one hour charge time. And is, in this case, that's pretty, uh, that, that seems to hold true. And keep in mind that I did pre-charge the batteries a little bit. So it, it, it wasn't too long. It was about, I'm, I'm gonna say about a minute of charge time. However, uh, it, it does make a difference. And uh, when we're looking at a one hour charge, that's a couple of percentage points. And in case it was deep, deeply discharged, these chargers do go through a uh, charge recovery mode where you'll see the first light blinking. So instead of staying off and then turning on, you'll see it blink while on the charger. It's a, it's a slower blink than it does normally. And that means that it's recovering, trying to recover the battery to a minimum voltage before actually starts charging and that takes much longer and on the standard charger i believe it does it at about 20 watts and i'm not sure about the supercharger and the rapid charger but it's significantly slower than even the normal base rate of charging so let's do some more analysis on this and uh, let's take a look at what the average power is for these chargers and uh yeah let me swap out and let's pull out the ipad all right so here are the numbers for the supercharger and the rapid charger we have 245 watts used by the supercharger and 238 by the rapid charger. So why the difference? This is completely as expected because first of all, the supercharger does have a fan and a seven watt hour difference over about an hour, normalized to 54 minutes in fact, is about 7.7 .7 watts. So the fan using about eight watts will make up this difference. Secondly, keep in mind that it's charging at a much higher rate so you would actually expect more heat. So I'm kind of surprised that it's so close. So this tells me that both the chargers are just about uh, the same in terms of efficiency. Next up, we have the time. We already know that this took 54 minutes and we have 112 minutes uh, for the rapid charger. That's about two X. That's a uh, very, very predictable performance there. Next up, max 338, 146, a lot more power. And this is a good lesson here. Even though it used up 2.3x the max power, which is always what they advertise. So when you're looking at a charger and comparing a 25 watt charger versus a 45 watt charger, you're not going to get that much more uh, performance out of that, especially given the device. In this case, the 12 amp hour battery is sucking down all the power that the rapid charger can muster. And then when you switch to the supercharger, it says, yep, I can take that. However, if you were to charge a lower power battery that the rapid charger is maxing out, and then you try to shove this much power into it, it's just not gonna work. You're gonna get a bunch of heat, you're going to destroy the battery. So if we try to test out a lower powered, say 6.0, 3.0 battery, we'll get different results. So let's take a look at that in a later video, of course. Lastly, I wanna talk about average power. Here we suck down 270 watts on average in the 54 minutes. And I'm not using uh, I'm not using the power max. This doesn't really matter. We suck down this much power in this much time. And that gives you average power of 270. 270 is greater than 245 because obviously 54.5 is less than uh, one hour. So you're using more than uh, the 245 watts. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
especially since we charged in less than one hour's time. In this case, we only used up 146 watts max, so obviously you'd expect about a 2x drop. So 270 over two, yep, plays in just about right. You'd expect about 135, um, especially given that 2.3x, you're looking at 127.5 watt average. So for anything less than the 12 amp hour and anything other than the high output, the rapid charger is a great charger. But for the 12.0 especially, this is really the best case scenario for the supercharger and you're getting a 2x improvement in charging. Well, I hope this video was helpful and uh, I hope that you would subscribe to my brand new channel. I hope to bring you more content. If you have any ideas, please place them in the well, I guess the chat box below or the comment section below. I would love to hear from you and it, and uh, we're going to get into some more load testing in the future. I'm trying to figure out what I should be using, thinking about using an M18 blower, which I already have. I might go out there and get a heat gun to get a high load uh, test scenario. And I'm looking for something in a low load scenario as well. What's coming up next is a teardown of the battery. So we're going to tear down the supercharger. We're going to tear down one of these bad boys. So we'll take this apart, um, eight screws down below, see what's inside, and we'll have some fun. Thank you very much. See you on the next one.